empezar. Vamos a empezar uh, con la, o oh, el episodio, el episodio y en pleno episodio, right in the middle. Vamos a empezar. We're going to begin again. So we're going to begin with our questions in past. So remember when you do, when I cue you with questions in imperfecto, see if you can come up with an answer in imperfecto. Okay, or if I cue you with a question in preterito, see if you can come up with a response in preterito. Y es un repaso, it's a review. Uh, so, you know, no worries. We don't expect everybody to be perfect, but it's a good um, good way to practice here. Todos ven. Pueden ver. Can you see? Pueden ver. Mm. Pueden ver. Magnifico. Uh, y momentito. I may need to adjust this just a little more. So I think this is the one that is very soft. Let me uh, test it out. Oh, see, guy, I got to put it on full blast. We'll be all deaf people. Uh, mm. Yeah, sorry about that. I got to put it on the deaf people speed because this is a really soft YouTube recording. I don't know why. Oh, and now I'm totally stuck. A ver, ¿qué pasó? Uy, wow. ¿Qué pasó? Oh, I got everything going. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Wow. Okay. I, I totally, everybody blacked out. I don't know how, what you guys saw, but I had everything blacked out on me. There have been some, uh, there have been some glitches with Zoom recently and i'm very very sure it is not my wi-fi i'm very sure they are uh whole system things here uh we're gonna put the sound up to a totally ridiculous level because this and then we'll change it back down so that i don't make you all deaf okay <laughs> um yeah the way this is set it's just bizarre so, okay, pueden ver, oh, and, oh boy, I'm gonna hold, let's take this off for a moment because this is just not looking right. Okay, okay. Casi, estoy casi lista. I am almost ready. For some reason, things don't want to uh, roll very smoothly here. Okay, vamos a empezar, vamos a empezar con la familia de Angela. La familia de Ángela en San Juan, Puerto Rico. Uh, y la persona, uh, la persona más, uh, ¿quién, ¿quién era la persona más importante de este grupo de tíos? En este grupo de tíos, ¿quién era? Um, uh. Tia Olga. 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 Olga en su most en 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 su en her en su en su en su mente. Ah, sí. Olga. Okay. Y cuando cuando hablamos a la tía Olga, decimos, oh, tío Olga, tío Luis. Tía Juanita. Pero cuando hablamos de la persona con el título tía, la tía, ah, un uso de la, a use of the. When we talk about her, it is la tía Olga. La tía Olga. La tía Olga. Uh, sí. Uh, trae algún documento. Are you bringing a document of some kind? Algún, some. Bien, okay. ¿Cómo, cómo era la tía Olga? ¿Cómo era la tía Olga? Oh. Es opinión. La, la gruñona. Gruña. <laughs> es gruñona, es gruñona. She's a kind of a complainer, bellyaker, gruñona. Gr gruñona. Ah. You know how you have buzz of a bee and yeah, yeah alliteration, gruñona. That, that's it, an alliteration one, gruñona. Grunt, 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 gruñona. Es la tía Olga. Um, 
¿Está contenta la tía Olga? ¿Qué creen ustedes? What do you guys think? ¿Está contenta? ¿Era preocupada? Estaba preocupada. Estaba, estaba muy preocupada. Estaba muy preocupada. Ok, vale. Entonces, uh, ella tenía muchas preguntas para Raquel. ¿Sí? Sí, sí. Preguntaba mucho a Raquel. Uh, y, ¿Y por qué no vino en persona? Eh, ¿Por qué no vino el, el don Fernando? ¿Por qué no vino don Fernando? ¿no? ¿Por qué no vino en persona? Y uh, ella contestará, she will answer. Contestará a este futuro. Ok. Y uh, entonces, uh, uh, bueno, uh, Raquel les contó, les contó brevemente a los tíos, les contó brevemente a los tíos la historia de Don Fernando, ¿verdad? De, de las noticias que el padre, el padre de Ángela tenía papá en México y que Don Fernando estaba muy, muy enfermo. Estaba gravemente, como dice aquí, gravemente, uh, gravemente seriously, ¿verdad? Uh, gravemente uh, enfermo. Y tía Olga le dijo a Raquel, creo que eso va a ser imposible. Esta cosa de, de irse a Puerto Rico, uh, no, perdón, uh, de irse a, a México para visitar, para, para conocerse a don Fernando, que va a ser imposible. ¿Ok? ¿Por qué, cre ¿Por qué creía? Why did she think? ¿Por qué creía la tía Olga que era imposible ir a México? See if you can change what you see at the bottom of the screen there into imperfecto. ¿Por qué creía la tía Olga que era imposible ir a México? Take poder and put it into Por, imperfecto. Por, porque estaba uh, peligroso. Porque si uh, podía, okay. podía ser peligroso, podía ser peligroso a uh, viajar. Podía ser peligroso viajar a México, ¿verdad? Uh, entonces, uh, ¿cómo se sentía? How was she feeling? ¿Cómo se sentía Ángela hablando con la tía Olga? ¿Cómo se sentía Ángela? No se gusta. Oh. Um, uh, yeah. No sentía contenta. No se sentía contenta. No se sentía contenta. Uh, ¿Qué quería hacer? What did she want to do? Dice aquí en los subtítulos. ¿Qué iba a hacer? What was she going to do? ¿Qué iba a hacer Ángela durante la conversación con los tíos? Um. Llamada la Doña Carmen. Ah, exacto. ¿Quién la, era Doña Carmen? ¿Quién era Doña Carmen? La abuela, la abuela de Ángela. Ángela, sí. Doña Carmen era la abuela de Ángela, de ¿verdad? 
y Angela iba a llamar. Iba a llamar. She was going to. Whenever you say somebody was going to do something, they don't put that in preterite. That always goes into imperfecto. Iba a llamar a Doña Carmen. Excelente. Entonces, llamó a Doña Carmen. ¿Y dónde, dónde vivía Doña Carmen? ¿Dónde, dónde vivía? Oh. Ella vivía en San Germán. En San Germán. Uh, vivía en una en un pueblo en un pueblo pequeño en un pueblo pequeño uh, lejos vivía lejos de San Juan Doña Carmen vivía lejos de San Juan y qué dijo qué dijo Doña Carmen qué dijo Doña Carmen ¿Qué quer... ah, primero, Doña Carmen habló con la tía Olga. ¿verdad? Primero, primero, la abuela, Doña Carmen, habló con la tía Olga. Vale. Y uh, ellos iban a decidir. Uh, que, que sería posible aquí. Y aquí uh, sabemos que Ángela no estaba contenta para nada con la tía Olga. Uh, tía, la tía Olga tenía una personalidad bastante fuerte, ¿verdad? Y aquí uh, las dos... Uh, Raquel y Ángela uh, vieron un mapa con el pueblo de la abuela, el pueblo que se llamaba San Germán. Sí, San Germán uh, era el pueblo donde vivía Doña Carmen. Uh, excelente. Y... Oh. Oh, Sabemos que hay un, hay, hay un cofre, hay un cofre, hay una caja con las cosas de, de Ángel en la casa de la, uh, de la abuela, de Doña Carmen. Y uh, entonces decidieron que, que iban a manejar a San Germán. Iban a, iban a manejar Raquel y Ángela, iban a manejar a San Germán a la casa de la abuela, ¿verdad? Sí. sí. Okay. Y eh, eh, iban a, a hablar, iban a hablar, they were going to talk, iban a hablar con la abuela para dar consejos dar consejos de give advice para dar consejos sobre si Ángela iría a México o no, ¿verdad? Y entonces todos se fueron. A uh, Raquel se fue al hotel. Y a uh, uh, y ella a quién llamó? A quién llamó Raquel? Um. Oh, um, uh, ella, um, y, ella uh, llamó Pedro. Llamó la, a Pedro. A, el, el, el hermano de Don Fernando. Sí, uh, exacto. Uh, Raquel le, le llamó a, a Pedro, el hermano de Don Fernando, para, para decirles que las noticias de la familia en Puerto Rico, ¿verdad? Y entonces, Ángela uh, encontró algo. She found something. 
Ángela encontró algo de su papá. ¿Qué encontró? ¿Qué encontró? ¿Qué encontró Ángela? Encontró una, un petit libro. Un, un pequeño libro, sí. Uh, un pequeño libro. ¿Qué tipo oh, de libro? Historia. Era una historia. Era una historia. ¿Y quién escribió esta historia? ¿Quién escribió originalmente? ¿Quién escribió esta historia? Ángel. Ángel. ¿Era una historia de niños? Era, ahora describo. Era una historia de niños. It was a kid's story. Mm -hmm. Ok. Mm -hmm. Y cuando describo la historia, uso imperfecto. Era una historia uh, infantil. Infantil de niños. Uh, de, del padre, porque el, el padre era artista. Ángel, el papá de Ángela, era artista, ¿verdad? Sí. sí. Entonces pintó y escribió la historia para su, su hija, ¿sí? Y dice aquí, ¡uh! Tengo que explicar un poquito. Érase una vez, érase una vez es muy formal, es lenguaje muy formal. Érase una vez, es como decir en inglés, once upon a time. Érase una vez, es como once there was. Érase una vez un coquí. Un coquí es un animal muy específico que, que vive en, en uh, Puerto Rico. El coquí es una especie de de rana, una especie especial de rana tropical, una rana tropical. It's a tropical frog. Coquí es un animal muy, muy, muy específico que vive solamente en Puerto Rico. The coquí is uh, an animal that all people in Puerto Rico know. Uh, the coquis are, are, are really, I believe they're a protected animal, as a matter of fact. So if you go to one of the, the big national parks that's in, Puer, uh, in Puerto Rico, um, people always look for the little coquis. Sí, son, son animalitos, son ranas muy, muy, muy pequeñas. Uh, pero todo el mundo en Puerto Rico sabe que el coquí es una rana. It's a little froggy, okay? Y es la historia de, del coquí y el, el pobre coquí solo quería pintar, ¿verdad? Uh, then, you know, this is sort of an, an autobiographical story, if you get the drift about Ángel, who also wanted to just be a painter. And the little frog that he makes his story about for his daughter just wanted to be a painter. Y los padres regañaban al pequeño coquí, but the little froggy's parents used to scold him. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about this story because you probably didn't think much about what the story was. He only wanted to paint, pintar. And the story uh, says the parents scolded the little froggy. They yelled at him and they yelled at him. And you can tell this is like all the time because it's imperfecto. So they used to yell and they used to yell. And uh, one day the little froggy left and never saw his parents again. Or his little brother. He's talking about himself to, you know, he is personifying himself in, in the little, you know, oh, he never saw his parents again, nor his little brother. So this is something that she saw as a little girl, but she never really realized as a little girl until now that it was her dad telling her the story of his life in a way that a kid might not be able to understand. Uh, el coquí pasó muchos días y noches en un barco. Uh, the coquí spent many days and nights on a ship until he came to the beautiful island called Puerto Rico. 
So here was Angel's little uh, homage to his life, telling his story to his daughter. Al coqui le gustó mucho la vieja ciudad. Ah, the coqui liked the city very much. Y allí se quedó. And there he settled down. He se dedicó a pintar, and he dedicated himself, meaning he took up his life being a painter. When somebody says se dedicó, they mean they dedicating themselves, meaning that they took up the job of being whatever. Se dedicó a pintar, he became a painter. So now she's looking at this children's story that she probably had been, you know, read to a gazillion times as a kitty and starts to understand that this was her dad's life. Uh, y aquí, uh, es repaso, repaso. Here you just have lots of review, ¿verdad? Okay. Y entonces empezaron, empezaron a manejar a dónde, a dónde fueron, a dónde fueron. La mañana siguiente, the following morning, la mañana siguiente, ¿a dónde fueron? Fueron a San Germán. Fueron a San Germán en, en un camioneta, en un little, little SUV, un camioneta. Y, hmm, ¿quiénes estaban en el camioneta? ¿Quiénes estaban en la, en la camioneta? ¿Quiénes estaban? Uh, ¿quién? ¿Quién vino con Raquel y Ángela? ¿Alguien? La, la prima de Angela. La prima. Una prima. Una prima muy joven. Una prima muy joven. Se fue con Raquel y Ángela, ¿verdad? Entonces, había tres personas en la camioneta, ¿verdad? Había tres. If we talk about they went, se fueron. Las tres se fueron a San Germán en camioneta. Pero cuando decimos there were, then it becomes description. Había tres personas en la camioneta. ¿Comprenden? ¿Comprenden? Y es el fin, ¿verdad? That's the end, right? Sí. Exacto. Ok. Hasta, hasta la próxima vez. Hasta la próxima vez. Until the next time, uh, which we will not take up until next Next year. Next, next year. Ooh, la semana, la, el año que viene, el año que viene, pero el mes que viene. Uh, o sea, bien. Vale. Uh, bueno, entonces, ¿entendieron bastante bien la historia? Did you understand the story of what that little art project was meant to be? Yeah. Okay. See, now, yeah. Un poquito mejor. So, you know, perhaps you did not realize because it was probably hard for you to read, read mm -hmm. through that um, little bit and get all that in there. Okay. A ver. Uh, vamos a ver. Um, hay preguntas de, hay preguntas de destinos o no? Nada? Mm, no, no, no. No. Okay. Muy bien. Uh, ooh, am my uh, boy, I've got a zoom stick here. This is uh ah, aquí viene. here it comes. It's freezing up on me. Okay. A ver, uh, vamos a hablar un poquito ahora and, and pardon me because I can't see all of you. My my screen's getting all messy here for some reason that I do not know what. Probably the same reason that Thinked out on us there. Uh, vamos a hablar un poquito de the. Un, una, una breve lección. A brief lesson. Wow, if I can get Zoom to just cooperate. No coopera. I'm going to have to uh, get this pulled together a little bit better here. Everything looks fine from us. It looks fine looks for you. Fine. Wow. 
I've yeah. got I've got about a third of the size of the screen and my share button is not coming up at all. Mm -hmm. hmm. Ni un poquito, not even a little bit. Okay, we're gonna try this a little different way. Hmm. Es curioso. This is curious. Um Oh, cannot minimize when it's recording the meeting. Okay. Vamos a ver. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have to try to figure out how to get my share button back. How weird. <laughs> no coopera con nada. Ooh. It is totally frozen up on me. Pues, okay. Um... Well, es gran problema. We really want to be able to get this so that I can share this screen with you. You hear the man talking in the background? There's something. Yeah, somebody. but that's uh, not here. No, I don't know where that's coming from. Not from here. Yeah. No. Did you hear that? I, 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 yeah, not from here. Yeah, no. I I think we've got a uh, definite somebody so, else's transmission. Oh, well, well can hear, you like got to wonder. You got to oh. wonder. Okay, now I've sort of got it, part of it back. Oh, here it comes. Por Dios. Okay, perdón. Here we're, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at a kind of a fun screen to review some things about definite articles. Pueden ver, can you all see? Uh -huh. Right. Bien, bien, vale, magnifico. Okay, use the definite article. So here's what we're gonna start with, because some people in prep for, uh, um, you know, talking about your, your holiday preparations, um, you know, started to get a little bit twisted up in this question of, gee, do I use, the definite article when I want to talk about things like um, I'm going to buy gifts or I still have to buy gifts. Uh, do I use an article? Do I not use an article? And what I would say to you, because this has come up more than once, and the article of it, of course, is just the word the. In this case, it's a definite article, the. But of course, we're thinking about four little words that we'll generally need to use, and those will be el, la, los, or las. Ah, uh, bien. So, do we use it or not? Don't let that get you too hung up. Um, it's the first thing I'm going to tell you. Uh, don't let yourself too, get too hung up with it. But let's take a look at some things where we can definitely peg that we use an article, and then we can take a little quickie quiz to see how many things we get right. Um, okay, uh, it says Spanish uh, nouns are often accompanied by a definite article. I would say more so in Spanish than you are probably accustomed to in English. Uh, and they are often used in an instance where an article would not be used in English. So let's take a look at this. Um, a lot of the time, and notice they never say 100% because there are always exceptions, right? There are always the pesky issues of there are exceptions to the rule. But a lot of the time, the inclusion, meaning using it, or the omission, meaning not using it, of a, de a definite article in Spanish matches up with the English translation. Uh, so, pasame el arroz, pass me the rice. Yeah, you think you should use it? and you do, uh, but como helado, I eat ice cream, and ice cream just kind of in general. Okay, uh, so they say, so, however, there are also many times when you will use a definite article in Spanish, but not in English. So here's what we kind of want to emphasize. Um, when you're talking about things as a general broad category, meaning everything in that category, whereas in English, we will drop the word the 
in Spanish, they will use the word the. So when you're talking about things in its broadest, most general, in, in the absolute broadest general category idea, you will use the word the, the. So whereas we say Mexican food is delicious, they would say la comida de Mexico es deliciosa. And that looks like the food of Mexico, but it isn't really, it's Mexican food. Because we're talking about all Mexican food as a general category, a broad category of things. We will use the. Los gatos son inteligentes, cats are intelligent. Los perros son cariñosos, dogs are affectionate. And you really mean all dogs. Dogs as a category of animals. Where we will just say dogs are affectionate. In Spanish, you really, it, it will sound a little funny if you don't put the word the in. Los perros son cariñosos. Los gatos son inteligentes. Los gatos son difíciles. Cats are difficult. <laughs> Meaning all of them as a general rule. Okay. They will use the word the where you don't in English. Also, we should keep in mind that we are going to use the word the when we use days of the week. Uh, whether you're talking about a specific day of the week or all those days as an every day. So the two examples are here. We generally use them with days of the week. Tengo que trabajar el lunes. I have to work on Monday. And instead of saying on Monday, it's got to be el lunes. It'll never be en lunes or en el lunes. It's just el lunes. Or voy al gimnasio los lunes. I go to the gym on Mondays, meaning all of them. Then it just becomes a plural word, the, los lunes. Okay. But they've got a little funny thing here. When the day of the week follows the form of the verb ser, they don't use the article. So to say on Monday or on all Mondays, do use the article. If it's just today is Monday, hoy es lunes, no article. Bien? If you mean on a day of the week, use the article. Whether it's one day of the week or all of them as a routine. If you're just saying today is, today is Wednesday, tomorrow is Thursday, drop the word the. Hoy es miércoles, mañana es... Jueves, ¿verdad? Then we drop the word the. Okay. Names of languages. Mm -hmm. When the language is the subject of a sentence, when it is the subject of a sentence, we use the el or the, well, in this case, it'll be an el because languages generally tend to be el. So, el japonés y el alemán son lenguas difíciles. Japanese and German are difficult languages. El español me gusta mucho. I really like Spanish. Spanish is pleasing to me. <laughs> oh, but when a language is the object of a verb, the definite article is not used. So, hablo español. I speak Spanish. Quiero aprender español. It is the object. What do you want to speak Spanish? Spanish is the object. No el. Me gusta estudiar español. What do you like to study? Spanish. It is the object, so we will not use el. Me enseñaba mi español. They taught me Spanish. What did they teach you? Spanish. It is the object, right? Up above, the language was the subject. El español me gusta. El japonés es difícil. We use the el. Below it, when it is the object of the sentence, we drop the word the. Okay. Now, if you forget that rule, that's not an egregious, horrible thing. People will still understand you. Here is something, this next one, number four, that will sound funny to them if you don't use el, la, los, or las. 
And that is with parts of the body. And this runs very counterintuitive to what we use in English. Okay. Um, with, especially with parts of the body, more so than with clothing. With parts of the body, we tend to use the word the. Me duele el estómago. And when, in English, you would really say, my stomach hurts. But me duele el estómago. It's just what they use with parts of the body. And often with clothing, although not 100% with clothing, but, you know, that's okay. Telling time. This is an important one. We use la or las with telling time because we're using uh, you, we're, we're using it to talk about the hour, la hora. So, es la una, uh, vamos a las tres, when we use it with talking about an hour. We use la for una or las for all the other hours. Uh, for long form possession, don't worry about that too much. Uh, they're just telling you when we have an apostrophe S kind of thing. So, las películas de Almodóvar. Almodóvar es un hombre. He is a man's name, okay? Uh, es una persona famosa. Las películas de Almodóvar son interesantes. Almodóvar's movies are interesting. And again, you're kind of talking about the whole category of the movies that this guy produces or directs. Las flores de tu mamá crecieron un, uh, uh, un buen. Uh, your mom's flowers grew a lot. Mom's flowers, las flores de mamá. Uh, titles. Esto es importante. This is important. When you talk about somebody with their title, doctor, uh, 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 Mrs., Mr., we use the title, okay? El Doctor Hernández, La Señora Cuevas. So uh, when you talk about somebody with their title, Mr., Mrs., Doctor, Profesor, a title, you use the article. But when you talk to that person face to face, you don't use the article. So if you're talking to Senora Orcon, or Ocon, perdón, Senora Ocon, you would address it as Senora Ocon, como esta? So when you use their title, Senora, to talk to them directly, drop that word la or drop that word el. Uh, los rezos de San Nicolás están en Bari. St. Nicholas's remains are in Bari, okay? Uh, Don Juan es un hombre muy romántico. Don is a title that they use usually with a first name. So when you speak to that person, you don't use the word the. Bien? But they're not speaking to Don Juan there. Why don't they say El Don Juan? Um, Don Juan, Don Juan, yeah, Don almost never gets El or La. Hmm. Uh, hardly ever. Uh, I, okay, so if I talked about, you know, El, el Don Juan es un nombre muy específico. Don Juan is a very specific person, like as a character, as a literary character then you might use it as el, but usually just don, don and doña. Bien? Um, there is a little quiz, but I'm gonna leave that for you to work on on your own time. <laughs> so that you can do that on your own, because it'll give you the answers up front. And that's something that you can do on your own time to just check it out. Uh, and see how well you do. Um, ooh, wow, and my view is real. We've got real weird, weird, weird things going on with Zoom. Okay, now I've got everybody back. So I'll leave that little quiz. Uh, I'll, I'll send you the link for the quiz and it'll be that thing where it's got the 40 questions oh, and you oh. can just kind of practice it. You'll get, yeah. you will get some of them wrong. I'm gonna tell you on this particular, you are gonna get some of them wrong. 
There are some that are kind of tricky. So what's the takeaway from this? The takeaway from this is don't worry too much about whether to use el or la or whether to drop it. Know that we use it more often in Spanish, really, that word el, la, los, or las, than we do in English. But especially when you talk about a whole category of something as a general point of departure, use the article. In English, we don't do that. If we want to say artificial lights are important when you broadcast, we're talking about a gener general category of equipment, right? So I would have to say, las luces artificiales son importantes para Zoom. Artificial lights, I mean, I'm talking about the whole kind of equipment, right? Uh, if I want to say, uh, computers frustrate me. <laughs> I mean all of them, don't I? Yeah. Okay, so I would say, Las computadoras me frustran. Las computadoras me, me frustran. They frustrate me. Because I'm talking about the whole category. Um, ooh, la comida picante no me gusta mucho. I don't like spicy food. I mean that whole category of things that are spicy. So that's a thing that because we don't do that much in English, it's hard for you to get used to doing that in Spanish. It's hard for you to get used to saying uh, things like, uh, por ejemplo, um, los viernes vamos a un restaurante. On Fridays, meaning all of them, los viernes vamos a un restaurante muy elegante. We go out to a really elegant restaurant on Fridays because we want to say on Fridays. So it's where things really are very different in English, where we have to remember we use that article and we don't do it in English. That's where it becomes kind of difficult. And that thing with titles, when you talk about somebody and you want to say, President Trump has X number of days left in office, okay? Uh, and we're talking about President Trump because we're not talking to him personally. It, we would have to use el with the title presidente. Al, al presidente, because it's an el. Al presidente Trump le queda, le queda 30 días más en el oficio, por ejemplo, okay? Because we're talking about him. But if you were talking to him, you would just say, ah, presidente Trump. Okay, you would just use presidente without the el. But if I talk about him, I use el presidente. El señor. Bien? Okay. So those are the big things uh, to remember to talk about. Uh, I want to give you plenty of time to talk about Navidad, Christmas. Okay? Bien? Uh, vamos a repasar un poquito. We are going to review some fun vocabulary is vocabulario especial para los días feriados y específicamente para la Navidad. La Navidad. Vocabulario específico para la Navidad. Uh, quizás sería importante. Maybe it'll be important. Ah, la Navidad. Christmas. Muy general, pero en español, la Navidad. Tenemos palabras como, por ejemplo, los Reyes Magos, the Three Kings. Really, this would be the Magi. Our word Magi comes from this word Magos. Mm. And of course, uh, they were kings. They were, well, los Reyes Magos. Uh, they are a bigger deal in Hispanic culture than they are in English culture, but los reyes magos, uh, the three kings, or we call them the three wise men sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Papá Noel, Papá Noel. You will help hear people use Santa Claus, pero Papá Noel, Papá Noel. Uh, 
un Belén, and, and some words will differ from one Spanish-speaking country to another, para que sepan, just so you know. Uh, uh, there are different words for like a nativity scene. Sometimes they call el Belén or el pesebre, like saying the crib. Yeah, a little nativity scene. Bien. Uh, villancicos, that's a double L. Villancicos, Christmas carols. Los villancicos are Christmas carols. Regalos, obvios. Árbol de Navidad, obvio. El elfo, obvio. Sí. Oh, la galleta de jengibre. Jengibre es gingerbread. Jengibre. La galleta de jengibre would be a gingerbread cookie. Galleta de jengibre. We're telling what it's made out of. De jengibre. Muñeco de nieve. Muñeco is kind of like saying a doll. That's what they call a snowman. La galleta de jengibre. Hombre. Oh, perdón, el muñeco de nieve. Muñeco de nieve, nieve, de nieve, again, what it's made out of, de nieve, muñeco de nieve. Muñeco would be like the male of doll, muñeca. Muñeco de nieve is snowman. Ángel, obvio, el ángel, el postal, a postal card, ¿sí? El calendario de adviento, es obvio, ¿no? La iglesia. Church, la chimenea, fireplace, fireplace es chimenea, la chimenea, el año nuevo, muy obvio, no, uh, la bota navideña, now this is one where depending on what country you're in, they may call it different things, they may call it calzón, which would be a, a big stocking, some places they will not call it bota. Bota is more like boot. Um, and really little kids put their shoes out for Three Kings Day. So this bota de uh, navideña is not done everywhere. Uh, girnalda would be a wreath. Compras navideñas, Christmas purchases. La cava. La cava es sparkling wine. No es champaña. It's not really champagne specifically, but it's a type of sparkling wine, la cava. This is a, a, something used more in Spain, I think, than in other countries. Brindis would be toast. Brindis. Toasting, especially for New Year, Año Nuevo. La uva. Uh, grapes are something you eat 12 of when they gong the clock at midnight for the new year. Confetti es obvio, no? Roscon would be a special type of Christmas bread or cake that is done in a lot of countries. Uh, sometimes it's called rosca with an at the end. Rosca, uh, rosca de Jesus or um, rosca navideña. Uh, often a little statue, a little, uh, like a little toy, Jesus is baked into the Christmas bread. And whoever gets the part of the Christmas bread that has that little baby Jesus figurine in it is the one who hosts the next party. Uh, that is like after the new year, quite a ways, like into February. Turron is a special kind of a nougat candy. I think that's only in Spain. I do not think you would find that in Mexico. Velas. Candles, velas, campana, la campana bell. Uh, bola de nieve would, nieve would be a snow globe. Bola de, de nieve, a snow globe. Adornos or ornamentos is also used. Luces navideñas, Christmas lights. Uh, bengala, I have never heard this word to be honest with you. I think that is for fireworks. Most people use uh, fuegos artificiales. Uh, fireworks are actually a more common thing at Christmas season in Spanish speaking countries. Um, we commonly or typically will use fireworks more at New Year's 
for them, that's a really common thing for Christmas celebration as well. Uh, Acebo for Holly, I don't think you see as much down there. Nieve, snow, right? depends on where you live, right? Uh, South America, not at all, because the seasons are switched. It's summertime down there. Uh, baston de caramelo would be their word for a candy cane. Baston is a cane that somebody mm. uses for walking. Uh, trineo is a sled. And really, generally, trineo uh, sled is kind of bleed, bleed in from, you know, gringoism. Uh, <laughs> uh, Papa Noel, okay, trineo, but um, here's the more important word, camello. Uh, in Spain, before Christmas time or during Christmas season, whereas we have a parade with Papa Noel, they do a parade with Los Reyes Magos, the three wise men, and they come in on camels. Mm. They literally, in, in Barcelona, they come off a boat. The camels with the guys dressed up like the three kings come off in camels, come off the boat in their camels, and they do a parade down the street. So instead of trineo, they come in on camellos, los, los reyes magos. It's because they had so many boats back then in the um, <laughs> Middle East. Yeah, well, I think because Bar Barcelona is a port city, you know, they tend to do it that way. Yeah. Um, Marilyn, but, uh, quick question. Si, si. Uh, when, when we were, one of the videos, when uh, the gentleman was talking about how they celebrate in Mexico, they said that Santa doesn't come to Mexico. Santa doesn't come, right. I was yeah. shocked. Well, yes. Uh, Papa Noel, you know, in some parts of Mexico, this does bleed over a little bit because of, you know, our cultures getting close. Um, most of the time, in, in mo and, and it's, it's a little bit different in different cultures, but um, in Mexico in, and Mexico and, and really many parts of, of uh, Latin America, Baby Jesus gives you a gift Christmas Day, wow. and then the three kings bring gifts on January 6th. So you do get a little gift on Christmas, but it's from baby Jesus, usually not Papa Noel. You know, unless you're in an area where we have this bleed over from, you know, Gringolandia. <laughs> um, but little kids in Mexico will write letters to the, the, the three wise men. Mm. And sometimes they attach them to balloons mm. and the balloons go flying <laughs> off to, to the uh, Reyes Magos, Los Reyes Magos. And kids will put their shoes out, you know, outside their window or outside the door in, at the stoop of the door. And, uh, and, and mommies will threaten the kids. If you're not good, the wise men will not bring you gifts. Mm. So, you know, as all moms do, the threat of, of bad behavior hangs over your head past Christmas, you know, into January 6th. Uh, and January 6th, of course, being the Feast of the Epiphany in the Catholic Church, which was the coming of the Magi, which really makes more sense than Papa Noel when you think about it, because it was the three wise men who brought gifts to the baby Jesus. So that kind of makes more sense, doesn't it? Um, but they did show you that uh, you, you, you guys got the video with the uh, posadas, right? Do you understand that custom of the posadas? Yeah. yeah. It, it's um, usually for nine days before Christmas. They showed it to you in a little family setting, but in small towns, what happens is the whole town will come out. And this is kind of like the uh, uh, a grown-up version of the class play. If any of you were ever little kids back in the day where you had a Christmas play in school <laughs> and somebody mm -hmm. had to dress up as Mary and somebody had to, you know, everybody, somebody was a donkey, somebody, yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of like that in a way, except it is a, a more serious and more religious oriented. Uh, and the Posadas, uh, they do have somebody dress up as Mary and Joseph and it's the whole, it's the reenactment of the couple looking for lodging. So the idea with Las Posadas 
it, it, you saw it as somebody going into a family setting, but what usually happens in a small town with Las Posadas is people go around to different people's houses and it's predetermined whose houses you're gonna to go to every single one of these eight or nine nights, okay? And you knock on the door, you knock on the door and they sing, the song you heard them sing is the traditional song. They sing that song over and over and over again. Uh, and it's a song asking for lodging, saying, you know, we're tired, we're seeking lodging, will you let us in? And you're, you refused, you refused, you refused till you go to the last house on the list for that night. And the last house is where you have a party. So you have like eight or nine nights of parties, which go pretty late. And, yeah. um, and it's only the last house where you're accepted in. And so that's that's the place where you have the big party for the evening, but you have to be turned down in all the previous houses yeah. that night. Uh, but you know the traditional things are you you get ponche, uh, which is the you know the kind of a fruit punch, but it's you know simmered for a long time. Um, and there are a lot of traditional foods like we have traditional foods, but. Some of them tend to be somewhat different. Ah, uh, Juanita, tienes algo? Yeah, the, the gift thing where you bought, you have a good gift and a not good gift, it almost sounded wow. like our white elephant thing. Yeah. You uh, know? And I think not everybody does that one. That, I think, was a, a little specific. I, I, I have not personally been with a family who did that mm -hmm. thing of like a good gift, bad gift. Mm -hmm. We used to do it with friends, but you didn't, you didn't have two. You, you brought what you brought and some were good and some weren't. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, the exchange was a little different, but it was. We could exchange them when they were not unwrapped yet. So you didn't know if it was good or bad. No, we always unwrapped them first. And then you could, you could, the next person who got to pick could steal yours if they wanted it. Yeah. I would, I would not say that. Uh, it's absolutely cast in stone that you have a good bit, gift, bad gift with all households. Not all the time. Um, but uh, you do, uh, they do a little exchange for sure. I'm trying to find my sound to get this out. Here we go. Turn down from that hideous level we have with the video. Okay. Um, yeah, but the tamales, the tamales muy tradicionales, those that's really super, super traditional. And uh, uh, the uh, roscon or the uh, pan de Navidad or rosca de, de Jesus, you know, whatever they call it, the, the little uh, Christmas breads are very traditional. The ponche is very, very traditional. And of course, just as we have certain dishes, we do, they have their particular dishes as well. Okay, bien. Um, I want us to spend some time as a group. I don't think I'm going to send you out to uh, small groups to do, or would you feel more comfortable doing it as a small group, talking about Christmas traditions, si o no? No, it's fine, yeah. yeah todos juntos, everybody? Todos, okay, mejor, mejor. Okay, uh, recuerden, remember, recuerden, vamos a usar, vamos a usar uh, como una idea de practicar uh, maneras de, de, de describir, uh, ¿dónde está? Uh, obligaciones, hay que, one must, o tengo que, I have to, o debo, Con el infinitivo, because we're going to talk about things that we should be doing or we have to do. Bien? Okay. Como, por ejemplo, uh, todavía, still, todavía tengo que uh, armar o poner el arbolito <laughs> navideño que tengo. Es un arbolito de así, tamaño, de tamaño así, this kind of height. Sí, es un árbol pequeño y, y debo poner el, el árbol mañana y tengo que, tengo que poner adornos 
y luces en el arbolito. Tengo un arbolito porque no puedo alcanzar uh, lo, las luces y los ornamentos en el armario. I cannot get to my closet because everybody living here. Okay. Uh, entonces, tengo un arbolito y no, los gatos no pueden subir el arbolito porque es muy, muy, muy pequeño. <laughs> y lo pongo en alto. I put it way up high. Sí, tengo un, unos estantes muy altos. Uh, uh, tengo que hornear. Hay que hornear galletas. En esta casa tengo que hornear muchas galletas para toda la familia. Bien. Ok. ¿Quién quiere compartir unas ideas de, de lo que hay que hacer? But what you have to do. Alguien. Ok, so I have, I have one here and I made a, a, a left hand turn at the end of the first phrase and I want to see if this is ok. All right. So, hay que comer con familia, pero nuestra familia no está aquí. Muy bien. You can, you can do that. So Perfecto. This, but then I can throw in a second phrase that really, okay. Perfecto. You, you want me to keep going? Sí, claro. Um, my quiero, yo quiero llamar mi hija en Alaska Ooh, y sí. mi hijo en México. ¿Dónde está tu, tu hijo en México? ¿En qué ciudad está? Otra vez. ¿En qué ciudad de México vive tu hijo ahora? Um, Mazunte. Uh, ok. En el norte, en el sur. No, sur. En el sur. Um, Pequeño norte, um, Guatemala. Oh, muy al sur. Yeah. Um, sí. Está Oaxaca. muy al sur. Yeah, Oaxaca. Oaxaca. Oh, Oaxaca, Oaxaca sí. Oaxaca, no. Oaxaca, claro, Oaxaca. ok. Yes. Perfecto. Entonces, sí, quiero llamar a mi hija y quiero ama llamar a mi hijo. Bien. Uh -huh. Excelente. ¿Hay más? Sí. Uh, okay. Yo debo comprar en árbol de Navidad, pero Juanita y yo no compramos los árboles de Navidad nunca. <laughs> oh, nunca. Mm -hmm. Pero este año sí. Este año van a comprar, ustedes van a comprar un arbolito. Um, no, no, este año um, um, tenemos un poinsetta. <laughs> oh, bien. No, arbol Todos mis árboles son artificiales. No, no. Sí, no. Nunca no. tengo. Cuando, cuando era niña, siempre teníamos árboles, verdaderos árboles, genuinos árboles, pero ahora no, solamente árboles artificiales en mi casa. Bien. Sí. Okay. sí. ¿Y hay más o no? Uh, uno más. Okay. Okay. Tengo que escribir a Juanita sobre Navidad con ella. Ah. Sobre oh. la Navidad con ella. Bien. Oh, sí. Romántico. Yeah. <laughs> ah, me gusta, me gusta. ¿Cómo se dice trying to score points here? <laughs> 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 no, uh, right, no, Trata regalo, de ganar so. favor. He's trying to gain favor. Trata de ganar favor. Sí. sí. Bien. No, re no regalo. <laughs> Pero. Pandemia, sí. <laughs> Es más importante estar juntos, ¿no? 
Sí, sí. sí. Es sí. más importante estar juntos que, que comprar muchísimas cosas este año. Sí. Ok. Bien. ¿Hay más o...? Oh. No. Ok. Bien, bien. No. Susana, tienes cosas, ¿no? Sí, sí. Oh, ya, yeah, sí. Um, tengo que envolver los regalos para poner debajo del árbol de Navidad. Debajo, debajo el árbol de Navidad. Bien. Mm -hmm. um, hay que... Uh, enviar 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 las tarjetas de navidad temprano tarjetas de navidad mira esa tarjeta muy muy elaborada so using las tarjetas is good because it's a general thing right okay I send and, cards yeah. <clears throat> Then uh, finally, uh, Debo, Ornier, Las Galletas de Navidad hoy. Me gustan las galletas de Navidad. Ah, galletas de chocolate, las galletas de jengibre, las, las galletas de azúcar, todo. Okay. Galletas de sucre? De, de, de azúcar. Oh, azúcar. De azúcar. Entonces, de azúcar. Sugar cookies. De azúcar. Eso es. Magnífico. Ok. ¿Más o no? No más. Ok. ¿Quién? 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 ¿Quién, quién es el próximo o la próxima? Who's next? I have a question sí, about... Sí. Uh, when I was trying to talk it out, I'll say it in Spanish later, <laughs> but that I was going to bake cookies... Uh, next week. I was trying to use Quiero and also Debo, Debo, and then you have two infinitives that follow. And I kept, uh, anyway, the interpretations I got were Quiero, Empezar, Ornier, A Ornier, La Proxima Semana. So there's no A uh, with the first infinitive, but there is with the second. Uh, quiero, uh, quiero empezar a hornear. A hornear okay. la próxima semana. Es un caso muy específico. Quiero empezar. I want to start. Quiero empezar. Quiero never has a little word in between itself and that second infinitive. Quiero empezar. Empezar always needs the word a. Ah, it just does. Oh, okay, okay. Quiero empezar a hornear. I, I want to begin to bake. Quiero empezar a hornear. Okay. Okay. But when you say it, you're going to say it in such a way, really, people are almost aren't going to notice you saying the a ah, because they're going to be focusing on those verbs of empezar a hornear. Bien. Okay. Continúa. Okay. Uh, one other one. Um, este año tengo que envolver unos pecos, uh, oh, pocos, re, pocos regalos ya que compré sobre todo en Linea. Ayer los tenía enviado directamente. Directamente, directly. Okay. Bien. Envolver, en, volver to come back, pero envolver is to wrap. Envolver is to surround something with something else, to wrap. Envolver. Tengo que envolver, debo envolver, hay que envolver. Hay que envol, uh, envolver los regalos para los niños, por ejemplo. ¿Verdad? Ok. Bien. Me gusta mucho. ¿Quién? ¿Quién es el, el próximo o la próxima? Who's next? Ok. Karen, dinos algo. Uh, Tell us something. Para escribir mis cartas navideñas. Al principio miro mi calendario 
Tengo que decidir cuáles eventos del año debo incluir. Uh, entonces, quiero escribir una historia muy interesante para mi familia y mis amigos. Uh, después, busco unas fotos para ilustrar los eventos. Uh, luego, necesito teclear en la computadora uh, creando un correo electrónico y la adjuntado las fotos. Bien. Ok. Uh, Bien. Y entonces, siempre, siempre escribes una carta formal durante la Navidad. Ah, uh, sí. De los eventos del año, ¿verdad? La carta sí. habla de, de los eventos del año, ¿verdad? Sí. Ah, bien. Eres ambiciosa. You're ambitious. <risa> sí, sí. Pero es, es un, una costumbre común escribir una carta a los amigos cuando, cuando no vemos a estos amigos todo el año. Entonces, ellos quieren noticias quieren noticias de lo que pasó todo el año, ¿verdad? Mm. Los eventos que pasaron todo el año. Bien. Magnífico, me gusta. ¿Quién? ¿Quién es el próximo o la próxima? Who's next? Just Keith, I'll go. Keith, yeah. Okay. Uh, tengo que cocinar una grande comida con jamón, patatas, albandigas, pastales. Uh. Entonces, uh, debemos limpiar la casa. Ah, debemos <laughs> limpiar la casa. Ah. No me gusta limpiar. No me yeah. gusta limpiar para nada. <laughs> <laughs> me gusta, me encanta cocinar, pero me, no me gusta limpiar todo después. Ni limpiar todo antes. Bien. Ok. Algo más. Perdón. Algo más, Keith. Uno más. Uh, tengo que uh, armar el árbol de Navidad uh, falso y las luces. Bien. Sí. Uh, ayer, ayer por la noche, uh, caminaba a uh, un... Uh, Caminamos, caminamos mi esposo, mi hija y yo en el barrio, en nuestro barrio, caminamos para ver las luces uh, afuera de las casas, las luces que, que decoran las casas de los vecinos, porque hay más luces este año que el año pasado. Es igual allá en sus barrios. ¿Hay más luces esta, esta Navidad o no? No. ¿No? No. 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 Aquí no. sí. Aquí creo que la gente está muy deprimida. I think people here are very depressed. Creo que la gente aquí... Se siente, sí, la, la, no, es verdad. La gente aquí se siente muy deprimida. Y todos... Hay, hay más personas que, que decoraron las casas este año, mucho más. Y me encanta, pero... Este año uh, mi uh, uh, barrio... Um, is, I can't think of the word. Uh, uh, Tiene uh, un, una contesta? A contest? Oh, un concurso. Un concurso. Voy a escribirlo oh. en chat. I'm going to write it in the chat. Concurso es contest. Concurso. Una competencia. Ah, sí, sí. Una Con competencia es igual. Competencia, un concurso. O oh, de decorar. Sí, 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 sí. Oh. 
Hay es, un premio? Is there a prize? Hay un premio? Uh, sí, pero uh, yo no sé. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes. No it, sabes cuál es el premio. Sí, sí. Es, es, uh, uh, ¿Es dinero? El año, uh, el primer año ah. por, para uh, un concurso. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Había, hacía muchos años, many years ago, había un concurso de decorar casas aquí en Fountain Hills, pero dejaron de tener la, la competencia, no sé por qué. Porque uh, creo que, creo que es porque había unas casas enormes, muy mm. elegantes, y contrataron a alguien, mm -hmm. they hired people, oh. contrataron a personas para decorar. Entonces, había unas casas grandísimas con decoraciones profesionales mm -hmm. y no eran decoraciones de comunes de la gente, ¿sí? No, a, a, entonces era un poquito artificial mm -hmm. y las casas decoradas profesionales siempre ganaron o ganaban. Sí. They always won. Mm -hmm. Entonces, ahora no hay concursos en Fountain Hills para decorar, pero así es. Ok, bien, bien. ¿Alguien más? ¿Alguien más? Con, con, concurso, concurso, mi barrio uh, de esta noche. Oh, oh, sí, ¿Esta noche? Sí, so, in, en uh, 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 un momento, um, a, las, uh, a las ocho, a las ocho, Keith. Uh, it, it's, It uh, started at, let's see. Empezó a cinco, las... Uh, cinco y media. And Empezó a las... Uh, uh, once de la noche. ¿Y dura toda la noche? Oh, oh no, just tonight. Mm. Oh, okay. So what's going on right now? Buena we... suerte. Buena suerte. Buena suerte. Yeah. <laughs> Esperamos que, que ganes. We hope you win. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not in it. I'm just going to go look at them all. Ah. <laughs> all right. Hay jueces? Are there judges? Hay jueces? The, the people. So the La people gente. that drive around, then, you, then they have a, a Facebook site where you can go vote, and it's three prizes. So the people that look vote oh. in houses. Todos los vecinos votan sí. en Facebook. Yeah. Ah, oh, es, es democracia. <laughs> de verdad, democracia de verdad. Toda la gente vota. Qué magnífico. Ok, ok. ¿Alguien tiene algo más? Benito. ¿Algo más? Oh, sí, sí, sí. Bueno, dama, ¿quieres? Dinos algo. compro muchos regalos para mi familia y mis amigos. Debo empezar esta más temprano en año próximo. Okay. Okay. Bien. Bueno. Muy simple. <laughs> Está bien. Ok. Vale. Bueno. Uh, hay más para compartir o no. Oh, Juanita, tienes algo. Dinos, tell us. Yo tengo que llamar al restaurante Jalapeños Inferno para ordenar oh. la cena de la noche buena por Federico y yo. Ah, bien. No, no. No vas a cocinar. No, no. no vas a cocinar. No, 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 no. Me gusta. Tengo un pavo enorme, un pavo enorme para la Navidad. Ah, fíjense, notice, en la, típicamente, típicamente, típicamente tradicionalmente, en, en una familia hispana, 
uh, la dia el, el, dia el día más importante de la celebración es Nochebuena, no es el 25, es el día 24, la Nochebuena, Christmas Eve. Es un día más importante que la Navidad. La Nochebuena es cuando toda la familia celebra todos juntos uh, y generalmente Nochebuena es un día más importante para toda la familia, pero esta idea de tener una familia muy unida, very close family, uh, cuando todos los parientes uh, se reúnen, se reúnen en una casa para celebrar es lo usual. Es lo usual, the usual thing. Es lo usual. Y entonces todos van a la misa de, de gallo. Misa de gallo es uh, midnight mass. Mm. Oh, es sí. tradicional ir a la misa de gallo. A uh, misa de gallo es uh, rooster mass. Porque... <laughs> Oh, because it crows at dawn. Empieza, <laughs> empieza a las doce. It begins at midnight. Mm -hmm. Sí. sí. Uh, pero se llama Noche de, de, uh, de Gallo. It's called, yeah, like chicken mm -hmm. mass, rooster mass. <laughs> uh, because, you know, it goes on for a while and it's almost time for the sun to come up. Yeah. Right? cock a doodle do by the time it's done. So, you know, that's the kind of reason. Christmas Day is the chill out day. It is chill day. Everybody just eats leftovers and sleeps in very late and really does not do much. But the, the congregating day is really Noche Buena. Uh, and the big party time is, you know, before one goes to midnight mass, if one does that. Um, so, eso es la cosa más tradicional. Okay. Ah, bien. Ah, pero empezaron a celebrar uh, one kind of vital difference. They started to celebrate. Empezaron a celebrar el 12, en México por lo general, el 12 de diciembre. Around the 12th is when they start celebrating, really, because you have Virgen de Guadalupe, eh, el Día de la Virgen de Guadalupe. First is the Virgin of Guadalupe de and then you start to build up to Christmas. So um, it's kind of a, a very long season. Uh, and the parties do go on quite late. So those posadas parties, and posada actually means in, by the way, I-N-N. -N. La po posada is an inn where you lodging type inn, where one would typically stay. Uh, but, you know, if you go to different uh, places like a tamale in Colombia will not look like a tamale in Mexico. Mm. Uh, the tamales in Mexico are wrapped in the corn husks because you, you've all seen that, right? And, and people go absolutely wild with tamales for Christmas. The, the tamales are a traditional thing. Uh, it's usually very specific to have that star piñata. Oh, yeah. The star piñata is the favorite shape for Christmas because each point of the star stands for one of the seven mortal sins. Yeah. How nice. So you, yeah. beat, you beat on the piñata to oh. beat away at your sins, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Or, traditionally, that was the, the reason for having the seven points on the star. One for each deadly sin. Um, but the tamales are, of course, prepared all day long, as Keith well knows. Uh, but the tamales <laughs> in Colombia are wrapped in banana leaves and steamed in banana leaves. So how your tamales get cooked <laughs> um, kind of varies quite a lot. And, you know, the ingredients will always be a little bit different depending on the... Well, wherever you are, the country that you are in. Um, 
I will be sending you an extra little video to watch for fun that kind of talks about this buildup. Um, oh, the Maria and uh, Cody are down in Colombia right now mm -hmm. as we speak. They have moved there yeah. for a while. Um, but she's going to talk about Dia de las Velitas, Day of the Little Candles, which is a Colombian thing. So whereas you saw a family in Mexico last week and you saw the uh, recipe, I gave you the recipe one as well, right? Uh -huh. We talked about yeah. the two, yeah. doing making ponche and making tamales. Beethoven. Okay, the tamales you're gonna see are gonna be different. Uh, they also in uh, Colombia have buñuelos, but I, what I want you, what I will want you to notice is that the buñuelos are goodies. They are um, un postre. Uh, they use the same word buñuelos, but if you're familiar with buñuelos, which are sold here, which are Mexican buñuelos, they do not look like Colombian buñuelos. They are, it is a horse of a different color. The buñuelos are fried pastries, but in Mexico, they're very, you know, flat disc-like mm. and crunchy. In Colombia, the buñuelos are little, little round balls. And they are deep fried. They look a lot like donut holes. Hmm. Uh, so you will see how buñuelos, the same name, but it's a different type of pastry, how they look different. You will see how the tamales look and are wrapped differently. And you will see, I believe she shows arepas. Arepas are not strictly just for Christmas time, but arepas are something you see in Venezuela and Colombia in all that northern tier of uh, South American countries. Um, arepas look a little bit like an empanada, but they're not quite an empanada. They are a little puffier. And um, so you'll see a little, uh, some different types of holiday foods. And their uh, festival in Colombia does start around the 12th of Christmas too although it's not celebrated quite like the Virgen de Guadalupe. It is a feast of Mary, same, same feast, but not with Guadalupe, just La Virgen, the Virgin Mary. And they set out little candles in front of their houses. So you'll see how they celebrate that. It'll be kind of a fun video to watch uh, and different food to look at. Bien? Okay, vale. I think we're up to our hour and a half. Si. Sí. Ya llegó la hora. Son las siete y media. Okay, so we'll call it good for now. Uh, I will send you a couple little links for um, the uh, Colombian Christmas celebration information there and the little quiz for articles. Ooh. So you can kind of test yourself on that a little bit. And uh, then we'll start up fresh come January, see? El, el 12, el 13 de enero, algo así. It's not that very first week, but it's the first, full, uh, the second full week after that. Okay, mm -hmm. está bien. Sí. Magnífico. Era un placer. It was a pleasure. Espero que pasen, que lo pasen bien. I hope you have a good time. Espero que ustedes lo pasen bien. I hope you have a good time. Espero que lo pasen bien para eh, los días feriados de la Navidad. Bien. Bien. Yeah. Claro.